Welcome to lesson 21 in the Google Sheets training for everyone. Uh, we are wrapping up the series with just a couple more lessons and uh, we're touching on some more advanced stuff, but we're keeping it simple and sticking to just the basic stuff. So today we're talking about formulas and functions and that scares a lot of people uh, when they're starting out with spreadsheets. That's their big thing is, well, I can read a spreadsheet, but this whole formula thing, it's very confusing because uh, formulas can be super complex. There's so much you can get into. Um, but you shouldn't be afraid of them because you can just know the bare minimum, just the very basic, simple stuff of formulas. And uh, they can, that bare minimum can be really handy and can cover a big portion of anything you'd want to do with formulas. And so uh, that is what I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna show you the basic stuff, the simple stuff. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, before we start though, uh, let me just remind you that in the bottom right hand corner, there's that settings cog wheel. You can click that and make sure you're watching this in full high definition HD so that you can see everything clearly. And also if you wanna speed things up, if I'm going a little bit slow for your taste, then you can watch this video at a faster speed as well. So don't forget that that option is there for you. So I'm gonna go away and we're gonna jump over to our sheets. Uh, we're gonna come back to this sheet. We're gonna start with simple stuff. So this is a sheet that'll be familiar with you if you've done all the lessons. This is a very basic, just a cost of items, the cost and how much money we've received so far. And then uh, a chart that we made uh, in the last lesson. Uh, and you can see here the totals are blank. Now they weren't blank before they had information, but I've linked them out so that we can fill this out. Because I wanna show you just very basic stuff how formulas work. Uh, now if you wanna put in a formula, what is a formula? Basically a formula or a function means you're, you're typing in uh, a command or something you want Excel to do for you. Uh, often that's a calculation. You want it to make a calculation for you or you want it to figure something out for you and then display that information. But what you're typing into the cell, I'm not adding these numbers up on a calculator and then typing in the total. I'm telling Excel to add these numbers up and display that for me. Anytime you're doing that, it starts with an equal sign. When you type in equals, you're immediately saying, I want to enter in a, uh, a formula. Now, uh, Google is already making a suggestion and that's based on, uh, you can turn that on and it will suggest things for you. A very can be very helpful, but we're gonna do this manually because I want you to see how this works. In this case, I'm just gonna do it the most basic way. It's not the best way, but it's the most basic way just so you understand. And I'm gonna say, I wanna this to equal B2, which is the food plus B3, which is a gas, plus B4, plus B5. So that is uh, my five uh, rows, food, gas, moto, entertainment, all in column B, and I'm gonna hit enter. And you see, it added it all up. It's all right there. Now if I change this, if I say, you know what, we got a better deal, the cost has now gone down to 900, and I hit enter, you see, it adjusts the total. Because now, instead of typing a total in, if I typed a total in here, then anytime I change something, I'd have to get the calculator back out, refigure it, and then type it back in here. But by telling uh, Google Sheets that I just want this number to always be the adding up of these four, and you see in the formula uh, bar right here, you can see exactly what formula is in there. Then it adds it up, figures it out, and gives me my answer. Now that is uh, the most basic way. I just said equals and then I typed out. Um, but that is by far definitely not the easiest way. So I'm gonna show you the easy way you do this. And that's by using a built-in formula called sum. And on your uh, bar right here, your editing bar, right here is the formula or function uh, button. And when you click that, you see the very top one is sum. And the reason for that is simple. It's because it's the one that is most often used, sum. 
So because I'm in this cell already, I've got it highlighted, I'm gonna hit sum, and it's gonna put sum in there. This is uh, sum basically says, uh, I want you to uh, perform some type of calculation for me. And when you, once you put in sum, it automatically puts in these parentheses, and then you can click and drag for the cells that you want to be part of that, and you'll see how that looks. Sum, parentheses, first cell, and then colon, and then last cell, and then parentheses. And what that's saying is I want you to sum or add up these from all the way from B2 to B5. And when I hit enter, you'll see once again I have the calculation. So it uh, works very well, very simply. Um, let's try it again. We want to know the total of the amount received compared to the cost. Uh, now, we didn't receive $1,000 because uh, it didn't cost $1,000. And we're going to say we only received 800 So I'm going to change that. So this we want to be the sum of this four. So I'm going to go up here. Now you could just type it out equal sum, but when there's a button to push to do it for you, why not just push that button? I'm going to say sum, and then I'm going to click here and drag down to the last uh, cell I want to be part of it and you can see it's C2 through C5 and I'm gonna hit enter and now it sums up the uh, total of that so a uh, very easy simple way to get a sum to get a total now I could also type that so let's try that just so you can see that instead of clicking that button I'm gonna click equals and then I'm gonna say sum and you can see my little hints are coming up of potential things. And then I hit parentheses, and I'm just gonna type in C2, and then colon, which means through, and then C5, which is the last one, and then close that parentheses and hit enter. And it gives me the same thing. Let's jump over to our food. You can do the same thing here. You can go sum and then highlight all these and hit enter and then it tells you we have a total of 60 uh, is the total of what we're doing now you can see our chart changed because it doesn't know that we don't want that total to be part of that chart so if we wanted to change that we'd have to redo the chart but the sum has summed all of this up now let's go over to something a little bit different. Um, I think funds is where we want to go. So here we are in funds. Let's move this chart out of the way. So we have the uh, amount paid and we have the amount owed. Now you can click in, when, remember when you click inside a cell, you can see if it's a formula. So you can see the amount owed is being displayed uh, because there is a formula in here that's calculating. And you can see what it's doing. It's saying sum and then 10 minus B2. So I'm going to delete all this and we're going to do this manually so you can see how this works. So sum basically says I want you to calculate something. It's not just addition. It's saying I want you to calculate something. I want you to be my calculator. So we're going to click sum we're going to say we want you to do my calculator. Now we know the total uh, 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 that each person needs to be paying is 10. So we're going to say 10. And then we're going to say minus whatever has been put into amount paid, which is B2. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now you can see amount owed is zero because Sally's paid 10. And we said we want this to be the sum of 10 minus B2. Now you'll remember in an earlier lesson we talked about copying down. We talked about if you type in uh, 1 and then 2 and then you highlight and you hover over that little square in the bottom and drag down it continues counting. We also talked about if it's a uh, something that shouldn't go up like let's say 
um, Betty is just a random name, then if we copy, it just copies. Because that's not a naturally known thing. If you were to type in January, however, and we did it, then it's going to go in order of months because it knows that January is a month. But uh, that we talked about that earlier. So with formulas, when you copy down a formula, it's sheets are smart enough to know that when you copy this down by default, you don't want the next cell to be the exact same formula that you want the next cell to be applied to the next row. So watch what happens as I, I copy this down. When I click there, look, it's not 10 minus B2 like it was up here. It knows that in this case, it needs to be 10 minus B3 because we've copied down. If we highlight both of these and we do that double click trick, which copies the formula all the way to the bottom of the table, then when you go down each one, you can see on the next one, it knew 10 minus B4. The next one, 10 minus B5. So rather than having to type that out for all of these, it adjusts the formula for each row based on the formula you've entered. So now every one of these is 10 minus uh, whatever it should be for that particular row. And we get all, all of our calculations. So that's what sum does. We're going to go look at one more of these and then we'll talk about some other formulas. The one that you use the most uh, is, is sum. That's why when you click this, it's on the top. Um, the ones that you use the most are pure sum, average, Sometimes you want the average of an entire column. You can get the average, count, et cetera, et cetera. So let's look here. Now here, we have your book cost versus money paid. Now if you glance at this, you'll see in a prior lesson, we said that two people owe a little bit more. Maybe they had something special on their yearbook. So their yearbook costs a little bit more. So we can't say sum and then say 50 minus because not all of these are $50. Some of these have yearbooks that cost a little bit more. So how do you do that? Well, first we want a calculation. So we're gonna say sum and then we're gonna say this cell and then hit the minus button minus this cell. So we've said, do a calculation and do J2 minus K2, yearbook costs minus money paid. Hit the enter button and you get your money owed. Now we can copy this down. We can click that square and drag and you'll see the next one adjusted so that you see this formula over here in the formula bar, J3 minus K3. Next one, J4 minus K4. Next one, J5 minus K5. And you can see on uh, this one, because the yearbook cost was higher, 50-55, because he got something special, or she got something special, the money owed is higher. She hasn't paid anything yet, but she owes 50-55. She owes more than everyone else because she got something special. Now remember, besides cl clicking this and dragging all the way down, you can double click and it'll just automatically fill to the bottom of your table. Once again, on this one, this person owes 50.25 minus 15. So this formula works because we didn't say 50 minus. We said whatever is in J8, because that number may change for some people, whatever is in there minus what they've paid so far equals the money owed. So now we have the money owed. So that's how you can uh, use formulas. Uh, again, this is for, if you wanna do a calculation, you do sum parentheses and then you put in your calculation. And if it needs, if it's information from a cell, you enter that cell address. If it's an actual number, like it's never going to change, maybe the yearbook cost is always and only fifty dollars, then you wouldn't need to have this column here, and you could just say fifty minus and then whatever. So that's how that works. Um, that's your your basic. Uh, formula using sum, and that is the one that you use most often for basic calculations. Now let's show just a few other of those, uh, so those uh, formulas that you might use, formulas or functions you might use. 
Um, you could say uh, down here, we might say average money owed. And then here we say we want to do the average, find out an average that money people still owe. So we could go here and click the average button and you'll see it's very similar. It has equals average instead of sum. And now it's waiting to know what uh, uh, cells do you want to include. Same thing, you can just click and drag for the whole thing. Or you could type it in L2 colon L21, which means all the way from L2 to L21, and you hit enter. And there's the average amount owed, 2629. Gives you an average right away. Now you may recall that if you were to highlight this over here in the bottom right, remember it gives you some information automatically. Sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, count numbers. That information is always available for you based on what you have highlighted. But if you want this to be permanently displayed as part of your sheet, that's when you use your formula. And so now you have the average money owed. So there's uh, lots of different things you can do. Um, if you wanted to know the number, you can say, show my reminders. Alexa, oh. shut up. I have to say that a lot because sometimes she thinks I call her when I don't. But uh, if you wanted to count, and again, let's pretend this is a huge list of uh, uh, students, and you wanted to count the number of students, you could go here and say uh, number of students. And then we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna go to uh, function, I'm gonna say count, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna start on the second line, because I don't want it to count that first line and go all the way to the end. And again, if you had a, if you had a long spreadsheet with thousands of entries, you wouldn't wanna go all the way to the top and drag, you wouldn't have to. You could just type in C2, because you know you wanna start on the second row, and then go C2, 2021 if you have 2021 rows and then you hit enter and why did I get zero I think because these are numbers so if let's and when it's count is for counting entries that are text usually or plain text so let's change this that's we're gonna delete that let me show you that you don't have to be, every time we've done this so far, we've done it underneath the column, but you can actually reference any column. So I'm gonna say count, and then I'm gonna go here and go all the way to here, and hit enter, and we still get zero, which is interesting, considering when you highlight it, you get the count 21. Uh, so let's, here we go. I'm gonna show you how you can use the help. So we're gonna click on this little button here, this little question mark, and it's gonna help us out. So you can see when you, if we go here and we say we wanna do a count, and you look at the definition, the count function actually returns the number of numeric values in a data set. So it only is counting numeric values, uh, which I'm learning with you right now. Uh, it's interesting because if you highlight text uh, here, oh, we're still inside that, so let's get out of that. So if we highlight uh, this text, you can see over here that it will count it for you, how many there are, 21. But if you use the function count, it does something a little differently. And you can see it only counts numeric values. So if we are counting, we'd have to count these, because these are numeric values. So if you count those, you'll see it says 20. However, if we change that, you can highlight this, click delete, and then highlight these names and hit enter, you're gonna get zero because it's only gonna count numeric values uh, when you use the count function. So that's something to know about that function. It is a, a count, it counts numerical values. So if you want to use the count function, 
located here, it pertains only to numbers if you're using the count function. Different than if you highlight a column, you get this count down here of how many uh, cells have anything in them. Now let's go uh, with another function that I want to show you that is uh, actually I think kind of useful. Um, right here, let's see. Um, no locker assigned. Now here we have locker numbers. If someone doesn't have a locker number, they have no locker number assigned. Well, how could you figure that out? So when you click this little function button, you have these ones up top that you're going to use most of, that you you would use most of the time. You have all these other ones that are available as well. And again, there's just all kinds of them. It's very just a ton, 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 ton. So we're not going to look at all these because that would take forever. We're just going to, I'm just going to show you a couple that I think are very useful. And under maths, one of the ones that's very useful is count blank. So this says count the number of empty values, meaning there's nothing in there. So I click that and then I say, I want to consider everything from the beginning to the end of this, or you could type in H2 to H21, or if you had 5,000 rows, H2 and then colon H5000, and then you click enter, and you would know right away, I have two blanks. I have two people that have not been assigned lockers so far. So count blank, again, just went to uh, the uh, function button, and then math, and then count blank. The other one that's kind of cool is uh, count ifs. So I'm going to say females. And I'm going to go up to the functions. I'm going to go to math. I'm going to go to count if. And if this wasn't showing, there'd be that little question mark there. You'd click to see this. And it's great because it explains to you exactly what you need to know or exactly what you need to enter uh, in order to use this. First, you enter the range of cells for it to look at, and then a comma, and then what you want it to look for. What are you looking for it to count? And that can be uh, in a numerical equation, as you see here, anything less than 20. But in this case, we just want it to count females. So we're going to highlight this to say that's the uh, information I want you to look at. And then I'm going to type in a comma. And now I'm going to type in quotations, F quotations. So I'm saying count, look at, all, look at each one of these cells and count it if there's an F in it. I'm going to hit enter and you see nine. We have nine females in this list. And because it's a short list, we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It counted, and you look at the formula up here in the, the bar, count if, look at E2 through E21 and count it if it has an F in it. So that's an easy way to get a count of uh, females. We'll do this, do it again, just so you can see it again. We're gonna say males. I'm gonna go um, to the math and go to count if. I'm gonna select the entire range. Again, you could type this in if you wanted to. Then I'm gonna do a comma and I'm gonna say quotation, capital M quotation and hit enter. And you can see we have 11 males. So you could do the same thing with a grade. You could have how many 11th, 10th, 9th, 12th graders you have uh, using count ifs. Um, count ifs and count blanks are just kind of, uh, you're not going to use those necessarily as much as you use some. Some is the one that's used the most. Um, but count ifs and count blanks uh, can be used uh, to help you get information, um, find the information you need, find who doesn't have a locker sign, find how many of a particular thing there is in a list. Um, it doesn't have to all be in one column. Generally speaking, your data is arranged in such a way that it is all in one column. Um, but you could, um, this formula, as you see, is looking at E21 to E21. E2 to E21, we could have it look from E2 to F21. That would be pointless in this case because there's these are it is a different set of data, but just know that you can do that if you need to. 
Uh, and then the sum function, as we talked about, uh, of course, is what uh, you use the most, and you use sum anytime you want to ca anytime you want to calculate something. Um, basically, when you s start with when you choose sum, you're saying I have a calculation I want you to figure out for me. And remember that you can uh, once you enter that, as we did in that first one, the sum, then you can copy it down, and it will increment automatically with you. So it's calculating. Uh, for each new line based on the information on that line, uh, which is can be really, really helpful. So those are the ones you're going to use the most. Um, keep in mind the just basic count function, as we discovered, does not count text. It counts any uh, numerical value. So that's kind of uh, an important thing to know. It will only count numerical values. Um, you can also use maximum and min. Those do exactly what you would think. Uh, they find the maximum, the highest number inside of a set of data or the minimum number inside of a set of data. Um, so those are your basic ones. Then you have all these other things that are down here. If you want to play with them, feel free. There's, there's basically functions for everything under the sun. Um, many of these I've never used and don't know how to use them. Uh, as you can imagine, they're so many different things that it uh, uh, it's very complex and you learn the ones you need to learn to do the things you need to do and the other ones you completely and totally ignore so uh, if you want to look at those you can uh, but for now especially if you're beginning I wouldn't suggest you spend much time on that I would say uh, you know spend time practicing with uh, the ones that we went over today especially sum and using how to learning how to use sum uh, to get the calculations you need uh, inside of a spreadsheet because that's the one you're going to use the most uh, getting being able to sum a column uh, or find the difference and then copy it down that's 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 what you're going to use probably more than any other formula all right so that's it for this lesson now hopefully that didn't scare you. Um, functions and formulas can be a little bit complicated. Uh, but again, uh, we're just looking at the basic ones, looking at the base, very basic ones that you can use to get basic calculations, which honestly, uh, if you were to look at 100 spreadsheets uh, across the board, probably those are the only things you're gonna find in most of them. The complicated stuff, yes, there are people out there who use that, um, but we'll leave that for those people. The average person is just gonna use the basic stuff. Uh, sum is the one you're gonna use the most, and then maybe count or count if, uh, or average or count blanks. Those are the ones that get you the basic information you need to pull out of most of the uh, uh, spreadsheets and tables that you're gonna be working with. So that's it. Uh, don't forget to practice again. Uh, practice, 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 forget, maybe rewatch, and then practice some more. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, post it down in the section below. If you have a complicated question about some complicated function that I know nothing about, I'll probably just say I don't know. Uh, but if it's about one of the functions I talked about in the lesson today, then I will certainly do my best to try to answer that question for you. So you can post that down in the comments. Uh, don't forget to favorite this playlist so you can keep all these lessons handy for you. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel to keep up with all my other videos if you would like. Uh, click that like button if you want to say thank you for making this video. Uh, and hopefully you're finding them uh, uh, helpful and learning more about Google Sheets. Um, anyway, that's going to be it for this lesson. Uh, hopefully you uh, got something out of it and enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, have a great day.